Let's look at problem 62 from chapter 6 of OpenStax University of Physics. Uh, we have a person pushing an ice block and for this you will have to consider uh, friction between the block of ice and the frozen lake. And uh, if you look at table 6.1 you will see the coefficients of static and kinetic friction. Uh, you notice that the coefficients of static friction, which would be these ones, are always larger than the coefficients for kinetic friction. For this problem, we'll be using ice on ice. And uh, in the first part, where we need to calculate the minimum force uh, that must be exerted to get the block moving, we will use the static uh, coefficient because before the block starts moving um, we have a greater amount of friction so um, let's draw uh, diagram forces here is the block here is the force and so we can decompose that into two uh, directions, the x and the y component. If this is our angle theta, then we know that my y component is going to be proportional to the sine of theta. And my, y and my x component will be proportional to the cosine of theta. Now my force of friction is going to be acting in the direction that opposes the motion. So my force of friction is going to be, in this case, in the negative x direction. And the force of friction, in this case the force of static friction, is going to be equal to my coefficient of static friction. times the normal force. Now the normal force is the force that is pressing one surface against the other. So the forces that are pressing one surface against the other, in this case, is just the weight. Plus the y component, which is also pressing the block of ice against the surface of the um, of the frozen lake. So in this case my normal force is going to be equal to mg plus f sine of theta. This is the frictional force that must be overcome in order to get the block moving. Therefore, my x component of the force, f cosine of theta, must be greater than or equal to the frictional force to get the block in motion. The minimum force will be when it's just equal to the frictional force, so I'm going to say f cosine of theta has to be equal to the frictional force which is mu s mg plus f sine of theta. I need to solve for f and it's in two different places so I need to make sure I can put it in one side of the equal sign. So let's say f cosine of theta is equal to mu s mg plus mu s f sine of theta. Now I can bring this to the other side of the equation, so I have f cosine of theta minus mu s f sine of theta equals to mu s mg. I can factor out the f
and now I can just divide that uh, quantity in parentheses through so I get that f is equal to mu s mg over cosine of theta minus mu s sine of theta it's time to put in all the numbers that's gonna be 0 0.1 times the mass which is 45 kilograms times the force of gra the acceleration due to gravity 9.8 meters per second squared divided by the cosine of 25 minus 0.1 times the sine of 25. As usual, I will need to make a little bit more room. So let's see, uh, the top would be 0 0.1 times 45 times 9.8. That gives me 44.1. And the bottom is cosine of 25 minus 0.1 times the sine of 25, which is 0.864. My units here obviously are kilograms, meters per second squared, which are newtons. And that gives me 51 newtons. Okay, now part B uh, requires that we find the acceleration once it starts to move if that force is maintained. So we now know the force and if this force continues then we expect the block to accelerate because the force of friction will be smaller and so there will be a net force which will cause an acceleration. So the block of ice will start moving faster and faster. Let's make this smaller so I have some more room. How have I made enough room for myself? All right, so for part B, I know still that the force of friction has this form, except we're going to have a kinetic coefficient of friction. So my force of friction is going to be the coefficient times mg, which is the weight, plus the y component of the force that is being applied. And in the x direction, I have the x component applied by the participant minus the force of kinetic friction. So I have F cosine of theta minus mu k mg plus F sine of theta will be equal to my total force which is equal to my total mass times my total acceleration. So then A is going to be equal to all of this stuff divided by mass.
Let's put that mass in the calculator. That's going to be 51 times the cosine of 25 minus 0 0.03. times parenthesis the mass which is 45 times g plus the force which is 51 times the sine of theta which is 25 degrees I get 32.345 and then we divide that by the mass which is 45 and I get 0 0.7187 we can play around that off a lot more but let's just leave it, leave it at um, 719 meters per second squared Okay, I hope that helped.